Thank you for clicking on this video and today I'm going to share the new update on Flutter SDK version 1.14.6 in the beta channel. In summary, the Flutter community have added a PWA implementation when you create a new Flutter web project. Therefore, I'm going to share with you on how to customize your PWA in iOS and Android. Moreover, I will briefly explain on this new file called Flutter Service Worker JS. So if you were to create a new project in Flutter Create Command, and if you go to your index.html file, you might see some added meta tags, link tags, and also at the same time, some script tags. All right, so let me explain to you all the tags that have been newly added. So first of all, the iOS meta tags. What are all these meta tags? Let me zoom in. So the first meta tag helps you to set whether this is mobile app capable, meaning are you going to set your website into a PWA in iOS? If yes, then set it to yes. Also, you can change the style of the app status bar style. This can only be in effect when you set the mobile web app capability to yes. However, there is three styles you can do. So the three styles are black translucent, black and default. However, I tried changing it. It has a black background and a white text. Comment down below if you manage to do it and share how you do it. So on default, it gives you the white status bar and black gives you the black status bar with black text. And the default translucent will give you the same color as your body background. The next tag, the title tag is self-explanatory. This is the tag where it will show what your app name is. Next, there is your Apple icon tag. This is where you show your image of your icon. There are other meta tag that you're able to play around with. For example, format, detection, and viewport. In order for you to download your PWA inside your iOS device, you have to go to Safari and then you have to go to the share button and this will open up a callout window or menu. Scroll all the way to the top and you see add to home screen. And then as you can see there, app icon and the title and the URL. I would say it's like a glorified bookmark but for your iOS device. And once you have done it, this will be reflected inside your phone app screen. And when you open it, it looks like an app itself. That's amazing. All right, next, let's move on to Android. For Android, you have a PWA configuration, a JSON file called manifest.json. So this is the manifest.json file. It contains the information of your PWA. For example, your icons, your layout, and your description name and your orientation and many more so let's look inside the manifest json if you go here you will see the different key value pairs that it has created for us however i have changed some of it so i'm going to go through on all the key value pair that flutter has created for us by default the first two key pair value is names so you have the name and the short name the difference is the short name is used on the user home screen launcher or other places where space may be limited while the name is used in the install prompt the start URL tells the browser where your application should start when it's launched and prevents the app from starting whatever page the user was on when they added your app to their home screen. I will not change this unless you know what you want to do. So there's a tip. Add a query string to the end of the start URL to track how often your installed app is launched. Next, display gives the preferred display mode for the website. So there are four different display mode inside Android. PWA. The first one is browser where you have your URL browser and also your navigation bar at the bottom. Second is minimal UI where you have a very simplified web browser on top like an app bar and you have your navigation at the bottom. Third, you have your standalone where there is no app bar or anything on top except for your status bar or your toolbar and your navigation bar at the bottom. Lastly, display full screen helps you to hide any bars, your toolbar, your navigation bar, and it acts like you have an app for your PWA. Mix up your background and your theme color. The background color property is used on splash screen when the application is first launched. 
The theme color sets the color of the toolbar and may be reflected in the app's preview in task switches. Make sure your theme and background color is the same to avoid any confusion. Next up, the description is a string that contains the explanation of your app. Next, your orientation defines whether your app shows in portrait or landscape. Next, you have the prefer related applications. It is set default as false. What it does is it opens up this window if you want users to prefer to install your app rather than downloading your PWA. If you set it to true, this is what will pop up. Under the related applications key, you have to specify the platform and the ID of your app. Lastly, you have your icons and they are pretty self-explanatory. The Flutter create command has provided you two default Flutter icons. However, you can always change it. So I'm going to demo you on how you can change it. In order for you to see your manifest JSON file or its property, right click and click on inspect. Then you see these two arrows, click on it and click on application. This is where you will see your service workers at your manifest. I'm going to explain to you service workers at the later part of this video, but manifest is where we are focusing on. So you can see here that these are the properties that we have set. So my name your short name and all your presentation properties and your icons so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my icons I have my own icons here and I save it refresh and now it changed my icon once you download the new PWA your icon will change lastly you see your script tag flutter as you might have known this is the service worker file so I'm just going to briefly explain part of this implementation so this code checks whether the browser supports the service worker. If it does, then it will have the load event to be fired once the whole page has been loaded, including all the CSS and assets. Then it registers the service worker hosted at the root of the site from our root file, which is our build web folder. Before I explain the Flutter service worker JS file, this can only be created inside your build web folder so you have to write in a command flutter web build and the flutter service worker js file will be auto generated for you so inside the worker js file you have two variables cache name which is self-explanatory it is the name of your cache and resources these are all of your resources i'm not sure on this randomly generated alpha numeric but these are the different resources that we need to add inside our cache if you look back inside our application and you go to the cache storage. All right. So in order for us to see our cache storage, what we need to do is we need to run our Flutter web app in release mode. So the command is flutter run dash d chrome dash dash release. Now let's see the cache storage. And as you can see, all of our files that need to be cached are inside this cache storage name Flutter app cache. So it has all of our manifest JSON files inside. I'm not too sure on the exact explanation for this add event listener and add event fetch, but I think that once you have your service worker installed, then an activate event will be called and then it will just refresh your cache by deleting, by deleting it, opening up the cache name which is the Flutter app cache and then it inserts all the newly added resources or files that we have, have updated and then it will just update our app if we have a new version. Then I think this handles with the event fetch where all the responses will be checked. If it's okay, then if it's not offline, I guess, then it will just return the response. If it's offline, then we will fetch it using this method. But I'm not too sure. I might be wrong. If you have a better explanation, put your explanation on the comment down below. All right, that's about it. So that's the Flutter update 1.14.6. So now we have roughly an idea of what the iOS and Android customization and how Flutter Service Worker is implemented. It's a very simple script that is enough for Flutter PWA. This is a very good start for PWA. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Flutter web and videos in the future. And let me know in the comments down below on what you want on the next video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.